Hey, what's up everyone? Taylor Torrance here from Cosmic Academy. Got a really cool video for you guys today. I wanna to show you a technique and an element that I think a lot of producers aren't using enough in their tracks, and that's white noise. Now, you know, typically we think of white noise when we think of white noise sweeps for transitions. I wanna show you some other interesting ways that we can use white noise to actually enhance the percussion in our track. And I use it in all my tracks. It's a really effective technique. Excited to show you guys. Let's jump in there and get started. Hey guys, all right, so here we are in Ableton. This is a quick project I just put together uh, because I really want to focus on what's going on down here. All of the other stuff here uh, doesn't really matter. We are going to focus on what I'm doing with the white noise to enhance this little eight bar loop that I've started here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this group on and just listen to, to the loop that I have going on here. Then I'm going to turn it off and you're gonna notice a very drastic difference. It's actually incredible what just two layers of white noise are doing to the percussion. So check it out. So as you guys can hear, um, it's adding a lot of sizzle movement. Basically, um, I'll solo it here, but what I've got going on here is a white noise that <clears throat> actually has a gate side chained to the snare. So I'm adding white noise to the snare to help the snare pop through the mix. The other thing I'm adding is um, a 16th note white noise hit that actually is emulating a shaker. But by synthesizing it yourself, you don't have to rely on a shaker sample. You can um, kind of modify the way the white noise sounds to make your own shaker sample. You don't have to rely on finding a sample and you have a lot more creative freedom this way. These are just two examples that we're gonna run through today. Um, and I'll solo these so you can hear exactly what the difference uh, is in, you know, in specific, not in the context of the whole mix. So yeah, take a listen to that now that you've heard it in solo in the context of the whole song. So again, you can really hear how much of a difference that stuff is making to the way the groove just rolls along and the way that snare just snaps through the mix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this off entirely. We're gonna start from the beginning and I'm gonna show you how to achieve this stuff. So let's do it. All right, so here we are without any white noise. And you know, what I've done here is I've just pulled in some, some stems, pulled in some drums, and I pulled in this cashmere snare. I really like the way the snare sounds, but it sounds a little bit flat in the mix. Take a listen. Definitely not a bad snare, but we can get it to pop through a little bit more using this white noise technique. Now there's a million different ways that you can do this. You could just bounce out white noise and shape it to the snare. I like to do it this way because it ultimately you're treating your white noise like an instrument this way. So I'm going to show you how to do it. This is the way that I do it. There's a million different ways. So the first step is to pull in something that you can make create white noise with. I'm just going to use Silent One because it's a very common synth and it's really easy to use. You know, you can use a stock synth for this, but then Logic, you can just, uh, or FL Studio, you can just use the stock synth. All we need is just white noise. Um, but most people have silent and it's, it's DAW agnostic. So let's just pull this in one oscillator, white noise. Okay. The thing about the white noise within silent is like, when you just have one voice, it's mono. When you add two voices, the white noise gets widened out a little bit. And I really like to, to have two voices for my white noise when I use silent for it. You can hear that's stereo, whereas the one voice is mono. So let's leave this on two. Retrig's fine. 
um, don't really have to do anything else. We're just going to leave this on full sustain. And um, all it is is just a white noise generator for us. So now let's um, create a MIDI region. And what we want this to do in this context is we just want to pull out, we actually just want to pull out white noise to, to sustain the entire length of the MIDI region. Okay, so I'll spare your ears, but you know what this is going to sound like if I play it. It's just going to play white noise the entire time. Okay, so essentially we have, um, you know, just a white noise playing here. And here's where things get interesting. Here's where, um, you know, this is where the real technique comes in. So I'm going to use the Ableton stock gate for this. Now you can use any gate plugin you want, any stock gate plugin. Uh, Fab Filter has a great gate plugin as well. Uh, I'm just going to use the stock here, literally just gate. Okay. And then I'm going to go in here and side chain it with the input as that cashmere snare. Okay. This is where um, you'll start to see how this really makes the snare come alive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this gain down. I'm going to turn the hold down, the release all the way down, and um, watch what happens here. Okay, so you can see that the white noise is only being allowed to play when the snare is playing. Now, watch what happens when I adjust the threshold. So you can hear the further I bring that threshold down, the more of the snare sample it catches and so the white noise sustains for longer. So, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let have it catch just the very, very tip, the transient of the snare, and then we can shape it further using the hold and the release controls we hear within the gate. So essentially what that hold knob does is acts as a sustain knob as if it were in a synth. The release is going to do the same thing. It's going to let the white noise kind of ring out after the, uh, the gate catches that transient from the snare. So you can see how um, how awesome the possibilities are with this. Now we have white noise that gets triggered on our snare, um, you know, that we can control in an envelope style way using this gate, right? And we can use the threshold to see how much of it catches. Um, we can use the hold, the release, the attack to shape the, the dynamics of the white noise every time it gets triggered by that snare. Um, just as a side note, Melodic dubstep and any type of bass music that has that that heavy dub snap white dub dubstep white noise snare, this is the best method for that sort of music. It's also really really great to layer white noise in in trance music like traditional trance styles. Also kind of the Anjuna beats. Uh, also kind of the Anjuna beats progressive trance style. This is um, a very broadly applicable technique that you can use in a lot of different types of your music. So, you know, don't let, don't let yourself think this is just like a trance thing. This is totally applicable to a lot of different genres. It's a great mixing technique. So the next thing we want to do, obviously we're getting like that TV static type white noise. Let's pull in an EQ and actually, you know, shape the actual sound of, um, of the white noise and just capture those highs. Okay. So I'll pull in a stock EQ here. First thing you want to do is just pull out those lows and the mids, right? We know we don't want all of that noise and grit from down there. And I'm just going to pull up and boost the highs a little bit because we really just want that sizzle and that air from the white noise. Okay, cool. So I'm going to turn this down now and mix it volume wise in with the rest of the mix. You do not want the white noise to be super noticeable. You want it to sound like it's part of the snare sample.
cool. Now, if you really want to get uh, kind of crazy with this, you can actually pull these into a group and compress them together. So let's pull in a trusty uh, Fab Filter C2. Um, a lot of people use this compressor. Now we can kind of shape these and glue them together so that the dynamics are even closely, more closely aligned with each other. Because we, again, we really want to glue this white noise to the snare as though it's part of the snare. We do not want them to sound separate. Cool, so you can hear when I compress the two together, it kind of glues that transient together so the white noise even gets shaped a little bit further so it dips down as the transient of the snare hits and it makes them sound even more cohesive. So you don't have to do this, you can just mix it in volume wise, but this is just gonna give you an even closer, better, more cohesive result. Um, and I really like doing that, uh, you know, when I'm really trying to get into the details of my mix. So let's hear a quick AB now that we have uh, you know fully mixed this in and kind of glued things together. You can hear how much of a vast difference that makes. You know, if you wanted to, like in dubstep, the snare tails are a lot longer, so you can mess with this release and really lock things in. Let's just hear how that sounds. I actually like the way it sounds right there at 26 milliseconds. It actually gives a bit more, um, a bit more length and body to the snare hit. I think it kind of brings it out a little bit more. So I really like the way this is sounding. I think the holds in the right spot. Obviously, uh, when you do this, because you really want to capture that transient, I would not generally recommend uh, increasing the attack. I would leave it at the minimum because you really want those transients to hit right at the same time together, so it sounds cohesive. So I hope that you guys see how this can be really, really cool for a snare. It doesn't have to be limited to the snare though. You can really uh, layer in this white noise uh, to any drum element or any element you want, even your bass lines, whatever. Let's see what happens if I just uh, route it to the hi-hat instead of, instead of the snare. That's this hat here. Um, in this case, you know, it sounds like that hat really already is probably generated or synthesized using white noise. And so, you know, what this is doing really just, it kind of gives you this interesting creative opportunity to bring out the sustain of the hat, which you can do, you know, in a pretty cool way by automating it. So we can go, um, we can do something like this. And then as we in, reach the end of the phrase, the hat can kind of open up. So check this out. and make this pretty extreme here. You know, just one example of a creative opportunity you have with this type of thing. The point is, it doesn't need to just be on the snare. You can use it on any drum, any element. In this case, that hat was already pretty white noisy, but you can see how you, you can just use this, uh, this gate technique to have the white noise kind of catch on to particular elements. And all you really need to do is just adjust this threshold so that you're capturing the part of the sound that you want, whether it's the transient or more into the body of the sample. So let me just put this back on the snare and then we'll move on to the second example, a really cool example I wanna show you guys. 
take this release automation off. Cool, that's sounding great. So the next thing I wanna do is I want to make a 16th note shaker out of white noise instead of having to rely on a shaker sample. And again, this is because it allows us to have more control um, and synthesize our own drum sample effectively instead of having to rely on a, on a sample that we're constrained by the characteristics of the sample. So let me actually get rid of this stuff. Let's start again with Silent One. Uh, we know that this is already just a white noise, right? So again, we're starting from the same starting point, just a white noise generator. I do recommend, again, two voices to keep it stereo. And in this case, I want to bring the sustain down and the, de the decay up a little bit. And I'm going to change the, the MIDI so that it's a 16th note. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate that out. That's actually, I think an eighth note. Let's go in further. There we go. Cool. So you can hear it's playing sixteenths. What I'm going to do now, here's where it gets interesting. This decay slider within silent or whatever you're using for your white noise generation, that is going to be the length of your shaker sample that we're creating together here. So check this out. So let's keep that really short. short so um, it just has that, that punchiness to it. All right. And then, you know, actually while we're in silent, here's where the creative opportunity arises that's better than using um, just a sample. Let's put some delay on this. Ping pong. Um, So you can hear how it's ping-ponging to the left and right. Let's put some chorus on, see what that does. Kind of add some interesting character to it. I'm gonna leave the phaser off, but let's put some distortion on. Gives it, I think, a bit more character as well when it's uh, when it has no distortion. It just hits the same every time. I think the distortion gives it a little bit more grit and randomness and a bit more harmonics to it. Might actually fill up the the mix a little bit more that way, as opposed to just being white noise up on the top. So we have this playing in sixteenths. Now, obviously, we need to side chain it, right? Because we don't want it to just hit straight sixteenths. We need to give it some movement. Um, I like to use just kickstart. Uh, really easy way just to get that, that groove going. For simple elements like this, we don't have to get too complicated here. We can just pull in something like Kickstart and move along in our production. Cool, let me turn these basses off so we can just hear um, just the drums as the, the loop plays. Cool, so you can hear that's already adding a lot of movement, a lot of groove, kind of keeps you rolling along with the beat a little bit better. Um, let's pull in an EQ, take out those lows and that muddiness out of the sound. Cool, we're getting there, we're getting there. Now you can um, give it even more movement using uh, an auto pan. In Ableton it's called auto pan, in Logic it's called tremolo. Uh, Sound Toys has an amazing plugin called Pan Man that does this, but essentially what you wanna do is just give it some movement within the stereo field as well.
There we go. All right. Uh, so let's put this on notes, make it eighth notes. So we're not, we don't want to move it every single 16th. Uh, we want it to, um, that can be a little bit annoying. Let's, let's put it at eighth note. So now you can hear it's bouncing between left and right. That's just going to give it some movement within the mix. Um, I want to pull some more of these mids out. Cool. So now we have some movement. We have a little bit of delay from um, from our silent here, which is a ping pong delay. So it gives it even more movement left and right because a ping pong delay bounces left and right as well. Um, we have the EQ. We have a side chain. Let's pull this to the end, actually. And then we have our auto pan that's making even more movement. So let's hear all the sounds in the mix. I'm going to um, put this back on, and then I'll put the, the, the tonal elements back in. You can hear how much of a difference that makes. Again, just adds that groove, really gets your head bobbing. What I would do arrangement wise is I would have this like, um, you know, I'd have this stuff come in, come in later. So, um, you know, this is kind of getting outside the scope of just this technique, but while I'm here, I'll just show you kind of what you can do arrangement with this stuff to have stuff build upon itself. Um, you can go like this. Obviously not just two bars, you have that come in every eight bars, every four bars, but you have this stuff layered in um, and it, what it's essentially doing is it's taking, uh, it's adding more to the top end of the mix. And if you think about the way that, um, you know, the, the ear kind of perceives the mix, we're just adding on additional frequency content on the top of what the foundation is, which is the kick, the bass, the sub, the drums. Uh, this white noise is a good thing to kind of add in to build upon the mix because it's not going to take up a lot of headroom and it's going to make the mix sound fuller um, and get, create a lot of movement. So that's just kind of a, a, a more advanced like arrangement thought uh, about how best to use this stuff. One last thing I want to show you while we're here is you can get creative with this as well. So um, with the automation, so like this decay, which is basically like we talked about the length of the, uh, the shaker itself. Let's see what happens if we pull this out a little bit right toward the end create a little bit of drama. We can also use this amount and uh, do the same thing. So, you know, we can just make that, that tremolo or that auto pan effect just a bit more dramatic toward the end. Let's see how this sounds. Did you hear it at the end? Uh, kind of get longer and start to be become more noticeable and bounce back and forth. Hear that one more time. Really cool to use automation on this sort of stuff to create more movement and more drama. Uh, try that one, that technique when trying this te this concept as well. All right, guys. So as always, I hope you found that helpful. You can get creative with white noise to really make any element in your mix stick out a little bit more. This can apply to leads, bass lines, all, all the different types of things that you want to just add a little bit more sizzle onto in your mix. Anyway, guys, hope this is helpful and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.